Welcome, dear learners. So far, we have discussed about Indian brews. And we know it's a long, long tradition that this bronze sculpture making is going on. The first instance I have already discussed, that is, the dancing girl from Mahanjodaro or Indus Valley civilization. The tradition went a long time and gradually it took the classical form when it started in Mauryan, Satavahanas, Guptas and later it reached its zenith during the time of the Cholas. Though classical bronze of India world famous, nonetheless we should not forget our rural artisan and artist. The folk artists were equally expert and aesthetically in the top in making such bronze sculptures or small statuettes. Interesting part of the whole thing is this. The traditional folk artists followed the almost same technique and same artistic form from long, long time, generation after generation. If we study the dancing girl of Mohenjo-daro, one thing will be very clear that this tradition is again was carried to the time of the recent years, that is the Dokra sculptures. Let us study the differences and similarity between the classical form of Indus Valley dancing figure bro sculpture and tribal artist of Dokra style here. Some of the things are almost same. You can see the technique is again Moduchrista or lost wax process. They use fillets or thread like wax in both the cases. But one thing is more interesting about the Indus Valley sculpture that is dynamic quality. The figure has immense movement. The dancing movement of the female figure is outstanding. On the contrary, you will find in the tribal art this a little bit of static in nature and the more interest is given to the decorative quality of the Dokra sculptures. Let us first know how Dokra people they make their sculptures. Dokra sculptures is actually the name of a style. This is practiced in a different part of Central and Eastern India. Madhya Pradesh, Bastar is very famous for that. Purulia, Orisha, there are some other centers where still these folk artists are preparing Dokra sculptures. Dokra followed the same style and same kind of format for long, long time. The artists of this place, when they are interviewed, they said, we don't make much difference between our style in the modern time and our grand forefathers have done for a long, long time. The Dukra sculptors, they followed a long tradition in the same way their forefathers did. They used the same technique, same format and same aesthetic quality. But recently, some Dukra artists are adding some new elements in their work. The technique is very simple. It is a little different from the classical sculptures like Nataraja, Parvati and others because they cannot sell it on a very, very high price. So the 
materials are also very limited and the source of getting the material is not very wide. For this reason, they restrict themselves in few things that we are going to discuss. First thing, they need clay. With clay, they make a model. This is a clay model. Now, next thing they need wax, beeswax. They prepare the beeswax and then they make thread of beeswax. They put the beeswax in a bowl and they, there are perforations or hole all around and they put pressure. on the wax and strip of thread comes out of these holes and this is accumulated in a bucket of water. And it cools down totally and make a lot of just wax threads. Next thing they start doing with the thread, they cover all around. Uh, uh, these are all wax thread. Then some, some form of design on whatever they want to do here, all the side, all around. Okay. Now, after that, next thing. They cover it with layer of another kind of clay <clears throat> that is mold clay. Now they keep some exhaust pipes here. Now whole thing is now the image of the bird is now covered with clay. Now this whole thing is put on the fire. This is the fire. They put it here. So what happens? The wax comes out of this exhaust pipe making it totally empty all these areas. Now melt bronze mix of copper plus tin. The molten thing, the metal <coughs> then is poured through these vents and all these areas where Previously, thread of wax is replaced by the molten metal. Then they put it again in the water or let it cool for some time. After that, they break the upper mold and get the work of Dokra. This is a beautiful example of a Dokra work. You can see that same kind of fillets or threads of wax have been used as it had been done in a long time back in Mahanjadaro. Look at the arm of the dancing girl. The bangles are done with thread of wax or the fillet of wax all around the arms of that girl. In the same way you will see that horse has so many fillets or thread of wax around it and till the head of the horse. The 
human figure or the rider of the horse has been done separately. It is not done in the same way. So later, after doing that, they place the figure of the rider on the back of the horse. So this is the technique we see which had been used a long time back, still continuing by the artists of Dukla style. As we have seen, as a medium, bronze or metal was very popular both for the folk artist and the classical artist. In the same way, the popularity of bronze medium does not cease even in this age. Many, many modern sculptors, both in Indian and abroad, they prefer to use bronze. It has a lot of facilities, durability, you can bring different kind of patina or different colors and also it is easily modeled first in the clay, later it is given a permanent shape in the terms of bronze. In India, the earliest sculptors, they started, I mean modern sculptors, contemporary sculptors, they started work in bronze also. Devi Prasad Rai Chaudhary was student of Abhinna Tagore and belonged to Bengal school. Though he did a lot of painting, but his first love was always sculpture. His sculpture is also very different in attitude and style from the Bengal school painting. They are robust, masculine and heavy in nature. One of his very famous work is Tramp of Labour, now in Delhi. It shows four laborers are trying to pull a heavy rock. Most critics and art historians think it is symbolic representation of our freedom struggle. All kind of religious people in India, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Sikhs, they participated in the same zeal to free India from the clutch of the British rulers. So it is an enormous effort for them and these four human figures actually representing our Indian people. It's a beautiful sculpture in Bruce. Next one I'm going to discuss that is the work of Ram Kinkar Beach. In fact we believe and most of the artists will believe that he is the first modern sculptor in India. Ram Kinkar Beige was from a rural area, came to Nandalal Bose to learn painting again, but again he preferred sculpture and he started sculpturing. Shanti Niketan was such a melting pot where different cultures, different kind of people came and stayed and taught the students. One such teacher came from France who brought with her the style of modern cubism. Ramrinda Tagore was an image of great patriot, poet and at the same time Nobel Prize winner. Ram Kinkar Beach wanted to make a portrait of Ramrinda Tagore. In fact, he did three or four such portraits of Ramrinda Tagore. I choose one that is absolutely abstract or geometrical cubist in appearance. The whole face of Ramana Tekor has been transformed into some geometrical shapes. The beard in the shape of steps, eyes bright and bulging, that, that is the symbol of his greatness as a uh, poet, as a writer, and don't forget, he was a great painter also. The whole personality of Ramana Tagore has been captured by Ram Kinkar Beige in this beautiful geometrical or cubist sculpture in bronze. So, dear learners, we have 
discussed almost in detail about the evolution and history of Indian bronze from Mahendradhara period to the recent time. The first example we get that is a dancing figure on which I discussed a lot. Not only that, there are so many such sculptures in bronze we find in the Gugupta days also, particularly one is very important, the Sultan Ganj Buddha standing figure. After that, we come to the Pratihara and other period in which also such sculptures are made by the sculptured of India. When the British came to India, they brought with them different kind of technology and technique of metal sculpturing. They established four or five art schools in Mumbai, Kolkata, Lahore and also in Allahabad and Madras. And they established a different department of sculpture where different kind of materials are used but it was always a preferable one, the bronze. Bronze sculpturing had a lot of problems in the studios also because they need clean, then a different kind of acid and other thing. So it is not very easy to maintain a studio of metal sculpturing. In spite of that, we we'll find a lot of good students and artists came out of these art schools and art colleges. And in this way, we we'll find in modern age, there are so many sculptors, they are working again in same technique and same medium. Particularly for portraits, for outdoor uh, sighting is very important and it is only the bronze that last long, even better than marbles. So we have seen how the evolution of bronze ultimately reached the recent age and artists are still practicing it. And I hope this have encouraged you to follow up the technique and material 